initially I just said, all right, here's a script. I read it. And, okay, this is what you do with any script. And I start researching it. And this one was right to the Bible. And, uh, and but it, what was amazing is that that uh, everybody wants resurrection, nobody wants suffering. Doing the movie um, and uh, going about doing this movie was, you know, thinking that if we had done this thing in a, a controlled set, you would have never saw the, the performance. You, it was truly birthed in pain. Wow. And it immediately threw me on my face. So right from the get-go, I had my shoulders separated. At that point, I'm thinking, you know, God, hey, hello, we're trying to do a movie here. You know, I'm an actor. <laughs> right, I'm right. Just an actor here. You're, you're letting, you know, Give the devil <laughs> or whatever it, to, to dis destroy us. Yeah. At the same time, we're getting fo phone calls and stuff from major publications mm -hmm. saying expressed interest that Mel Gibson is anti-Semitic. And all this stuff is compounding over and over. The cursing, the... the uh, I remember at one point, um, uh, Mel Gibson uh, they, he would take God's name in vain. And I would say, hey, as Jesus. And looking as Jesus, and I said, don't take my father's name in vain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that I would be, I'd become him. And it was a big part of that I don't want people to see me. I want them to see Jesus. Sure. That when people come to the theater, that what they experience is they can look right at themselves the way God sees them. Not the way we see ourselves, but the way God sees us. And that's who you really are. Yeah. And so, again, I, go, is that the, I was scourged, uh, accidentally hit. With, um, during the carrying of the cross, my shoulder was dislocated. Up on the cr cross, uh, I had... You know, I, I weighed 210 pounds. Uh, in the filming, I was about 168. I, I was so sick, I kept throwing up. I had my both lungs filled with fluid, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. After the movie was over, many people don't know, and I don't talk about it too much, but I had ha have to have heart surgery. So, you know, I, I was in a, a place of deep, deep, uh, just like in, a, in the zone. Yeah. And, and throughout the whole film, I was always meditating and always praying the whole time. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, as you would say, staying in character. Um, and this was important because I knew that for only the people that would be able to see Jesus is through the prayer, mm -hmm. the daily prayer and the fasting. And the fasting was immediate because of the sickness. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the movie, when I was on the cross, um, my body is blue. There was no makeup. My body was actually blue. Wow. They, between takes, as I'm here, um, th they would put, uh, they would take me down, and my, every time my shoulder was locked in, there was a thousand foot cliff, and it would hit the cross, and would snap my shoulder out of joint, and I was, in, I was just beyond. And at that point, I was so sick that it would be ripped out, and I, 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 I honestly, I could barely feel it anyway. I was so gone, but something was wrong with my heart. And the man put a stethoscope on my heart, and he said, Mel, he can die. And at that point, you know, Mel, the, some of the greatest things about Mel Gibson was that he was a gambling man. And he said, Jim, what do you think? And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going between me and this is between me and God because I never thought I was good enough mm. wow. and at that moment it was I'm ready to go home mm -hmm. so you can take me here that's no problem but I knew if I died making this movie I knew that people would be so many people would be safe yeah. at the end of the movie I was walking up the, the, the mountainside as I got up about halfway, everybody's in, um, everybody's in lo location, mm -hmm. uh, about 250 people. About halfway up, I felt this presence come over me, an uh, evil presence. And it was, you're a dead man. And I remember thinking, this is the best news. This is where I was. This is the best news I've ever had because I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. Oh. I got to the top. Um, 
about the fifth take, the clouds were so low, the thunder and lightning was uh, the sound of a howitzer. It was so powerful that you could feel the earth move. Yeah. And I saw uh, two people that were about as close as these two are to me, and their eyes were looking up, and they were watering like they were going to cry. And my hair, I couldn't feel it. And I heard a huge gasp in the audience because they saw something, and I couldn't hear anything. It was like an eye of a storm. Uh-huh. If you're in the eye of the storm, your hair could be blowing. It could be 30 knot winds, and I don't. I never heard it, heard the wind blowing. I could just. All, it was silence. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and this light came right down from heaven and lit me up. What people witnessed was an illumination around my body and a fire on the right and left side of my head. And for one moment, I was looking at myself outside my body. You get struck with lightning. I was struck by lightning. Yeah. And the, there were three groups of people. Uh, Pastor Miles mentioned that it, asked me this yesterday. Was it true there were a lot of people that were very indifferent about doing, you know, being extras in the movie? I said, yes, tremendous amount. In fact, there were three groups of people and there were the believers, and there were the non-believers, and there were the fence riders. They're the ones that are very indifferent about it. Mm-hmm. Two of those are bad decisions. But um, the, what was amazing is that people who think they're fence riding think that that's not a choice. It is a choice. Mm-hmm. You are fence riding, and that is a decision that one is making. Mm-hmm. And, um, but when I was hit, Everybody fell on their face. Amazing. The ground shook. Yeah. And um, from that point, that was the last shot of the movie. Mm. We're gonna, in a second, we're going to look at that last scene when they dropped the cross into the, into the ground and it shook. And yeah. you, were, you were telling me over our conversation that as the, because where you were elevated, uh, the wind would blow and the cross would move and your shoulder would continually come out of socket mm-hmm. and... Uh, the pneumonia had set in your lungs and some of those things. Tell us about that. Uh, I, I think, I mean, the, 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 I couldn't breathe very well. Um, the, 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 obviously, people, when you're hung on a cross, you, you die by asphyxiation, suffocation. Yeah. Um, but I, w- I mean, physically, I, could, I was struggling. But our Lord was letting me feel a little bit of what he went through. Yeah. And he was sustaining me, mm-hmm. but to a point of how far do you want to go with this? Mm-hmm. How, how much of, do you want the world to see of me? Right. And I said, every bit of it. Well, then you're in for it. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, Lord, I want to drink your, can you drink the cup that I'm going, yes, we can. Mm-hmm. We can, James and John, asking mm-hmm. that we want to sit at your right and left hand side. Mm-hmm. So it, it was given. And there's nothing better for me than to give my life for Jesus Christ. Mm, tremendous.